Coming up tonight on Aztec News, students create an innovative project to raise awareness about Palestine. Plus, SDSU attempts to educate students about sexual violence with a week-long event. And TEDx comes to campus to talk about topics important to students. Aztec News starts right now. Live from San Diego State University, this is Aztec News. Good evening. Welcome to Aztec News. I'm Chloe Salsameda. And I'm Anthony Reclosado. The man who put SDSU on the college basketball map is finally stepping down after 18 years atop the Mesa. Legendary coach Steve Fisher officially announced his retirement alongside longtime assistant and successor Brian Dutcher. Fisher ends his career as an Aztec as SDSU's all-time winningest coach with eight NCAA tournament bids. Despite having another year on his contract, he said it was time for a change. You don't look back, you look forward, and you make your decisions work. I will never, ever second guess, did I go, did I do it too soon, did I do it? I did it at the right time for me. Fisher said he will remain with the program, but is unsure in what role. As spring semester began, the Professional Studies and Fine Arts Building welcomed its students back with a flood. Aztec News' Jasmine Bermudez takes us to the site of the damage. It was a terrible situation for SDSU officials as heavy storms led to classroom, lab, and office changes. The Professional Studies and Fine Arts Building was damaged by heavy rain on Friday, January 20th. According to SDSU Director Bailing Shaw, the rainwater from the storm outside came in through the windows in the classroom on the northeast corner of the building and slid south into other spaces. SDSU International Programs Director Giancarlo Taylor said he saw the damage. What was happening. There was maybe I'd say an inch or two of water in some places in the hallway and in some of the classrooms. And so at that point we um, called the police and got students out. The flood damaged hallways, two classrooms, a digital media lab, and six faculty offices. Noah Arsenault, a media studies professor at SDSU, said his office was flooded. And the water flowed into my office. It didn't touch any of the books or get into my filing cabinets, um, but the walls had to be repaired because of the fear of mold. According to the Daily Aztec, nine classes had to be moved because of damaged carpets and walls. Arsenal said he had to move out of his office. So I had to move out of the office, including all of the furniture you see behind me, and I was out of the office for at least two weeks, uh, maybe it was even three weeks. Fortunately, another professor let me use their office, but it was a major major, major inconvenience. The rooms and hallways have all been repaired and are back to normal. Dr. Bailing Shaw said it appears that the rainwater from the storm came in through the windows, but we are still unsure what caused the flood, which company provided the windows, and what the cost of the damage was. SDSU Facilities Services has not responded to my email. The damage has been fixed and students have resumed using the classrooms. SDSU experiences crimes of varying degrees, the most prevalent being petty theft. One location that is targeted by individuals is the SDSU bookstore. Items typically stolen are keychains, lanyards, and textbooks, according to the Daily Aztec. Bookstore thieves then flee to the Love Library to hide out. Transform SDSU swept the Associated Students Executive Board positions for next year during the election results party on March 16th. President-elect Chemezi Eberekwe won with more than 3,000 votes. Eberekwe says he's humble about the win and excited to take on his position as president of AS next year. Your president have just inspired me to, and, and just made me appreciate being able to, to stand next to four leaders who set themselves apart from, from the day that they stepped, on, stepped foot on the off campus and, and to now. 20% of SDSU students voted this election season more than any year before. The need for mental health resources on college campuses is crucial. The 18 to 24 year old age group shows the lowest rate of help seeking. Currently, SDSU has 10 full-time members serving a student population of 34,000, offering resources on and off campus. Students who are interested can join SDSU's Active Minds chapter, which empowers students to speak openly about mental health. San Diego State University students living in campus housing are not able to rank their preference when applying for housing. Aztec News' Mackenzie Boss is on campus at an SDSU residence hall to see what students think. 
San Diego State University's current on-campus housing system does not allow students to rank which dorms they'd prefer to be placed in. Through this system, students do not have the option to pay more money if they would like to be placed in a nicer dorm. SDSU resident advisor Christian Onwuka said pricing is based upon room size, not which dorm building you are assigned to. A common misconception people have is that, oh, I'm going to stay in Zura and that's going to be more expensive in comparison to maybe Chappie. And it doesn't work like that. Every, uh, the price of housing is based off the room type you get as well as the meal plan that you decide to, to choose. We're here at Chapultepec Residence Hall, nicknamed Crappy Chappie, to find out if students would be willing to pay more to be in a nicer dorm. Freshman Maddie Ferdek, who lives in a triple room in Chapultepec Residence Hall, said she wishes she was given the option to pay more to be placed in one of the newer dorms instead. Just speaking from my personal experience, like I had picked a double as my number one because I knew one person I wanted to live with and we ended up getting put in a triple. And then obviously like we would have never chose Chappie. Like we actually like had like spoken about it before and we were saying, wow, like Chappie is the worst option. Like that'd be like the worst place to live. Whether SDSU's Office of Housing Administration will change the system is unknown. But for now, students in same size rooms will all pay the same regardless of if their dorm is old or new. For Aztec News, I'm Mackenzie Boss. We reached out to the Office of Housing Administration. However, no one was available for an interview. When Aztec News returns, SDSU students are taking part in Palestine Solidarity Month. And a residence hall is getting a rude awakening. More after these messages. Welcome back. As a part of Palestine Solidarity Month, Students for Justice in Palestine set up their annual Mock Israeli Apartheid Wall to raise awareness of the ongoing Middle East struggle. I went to the wall to get a closer look on the issue. Every March on Campanile Walkway, SDSU's SJP chapter raises a Mock Apartheid Wall to offer students a Palestinian perspective. Junior Mustafa Alemi, a political science major and member of SJP, hopes the wall educates students. Um, the wall itself is supposed to represent the actual apartheid wall that's within Israel. They call it the barrier wall, um, but it was a wall that cuts off the West Bank um, from Israel. On the wall are statistics and drawings depicting the struggle Palestinians face in Israel. Included in these drawings are Viva La Raza and the Black Lives Matter movement. Alemi says there are similarities in all the movements fight for justice. Um, like on the panel over there, Black Lives Matter, their official platform actually has endorsed um, the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement um, and has, has called on Israel to, you know, to grant Palestinians their human rights. Aside from the panels, there's an opening with a similar meaning. The opening in the wall seen here is a representation of an uh, Israeli checkpoint, what SJP describes as a deterrent for Palestinians who are detained by the Israeli government at these border crossings. Sophomore Yona Sefcevich, a business and finance major who was tabling for Israel Peace Week across from the wall, says SJP is not solving any problems with this form of demonstration. It's not like they're not really presenting a solution, they're just presenting a lot of problems. Um, but I mean, the point of a presenting a problem is to hopefully present a solution and like after talking to them, they don't really have any solutions. While disagreeing with SJP's wall, Sefcevic says both sides have talked throughout the week and hopes to continue this open dialogue. The apartheid wall is not unique to SDSU as Michigan, UCLA and Marquette have had their SJP chapters raise similar structures. Residents at Chapultepec Residence Hall say the fire alarm's constant ringing is a problem. SDSU's housing office and Chapultepec's residence hall coordinator did not respond to Aztec News' request for comment. According to Chapultepec resident Kylie Silva, the fire alarm goes off so often that they have been instructed by residential assistants to ignore the alarm. In fact, the last time it went off, it went off twice, and then an RA told us if it went off the third time, we wouldn't have to come downstairs or outside. We could just stay in our rooms and ignore the noise. SDSU Corporal Mark Peterson said there are many reasons the fire alarm could be triggered. He is not sure why they keep going off, and he did not know students were told to stay inside. Since its opening on January 20th, SDSU's Women's Resource Center has held events and talks to raise awareness for intersectionality and LGBT issues. Aztec News' Nicole Sazagar shows us a closer look at the center. Nicole? As a space for women, the Resource Center provides a place where difficult topics can be discussed, women can be celebrated, and cultural change can be supported. Sitting on the corner of Lindo Paseo and Campanile, the Women's Resource Center has become a safe space for everyone on campus. 
As issues of sexual assault and racism become more prevalent on college campuses, the center attempts to alleviate the issues by creating events, talks, and discussions to create a safer and more educated environment on campus. For senior rhetoric and writing studies major Sarah Tenore, working at the Women's Resource Center means helping people on campus and bringing awareness to social issues. What I like working at the Women's Resource Center is that you know, it's a really empowering and positive space for everyone who works here. And I feel like everyone who comes in too, I would say that that's my favorite part just because it's super validating. You have people who support you, even if you don't know them that well, there's always very supportive conversations going on. Tiana Vargas, a feminist peer educator at the center, says that there has been positive feedback from women on how the center has helped them. Feedback that I've heard from folks who come here is that and I also resonate with these feelings, it's that I feel comfortable. I feel like there are really amazing conversations that happen in this space that um, we don't get to have in other places. For Tiana, working at a place that centers around women is the first step in creating a better world. I'm trans and um, being socialized as a woman and having a strong identity in womanhood. Um, this is a really important investment for me personally, but also for the kind of world that I imagine. The Women's Resource Center is located at 5121 Campanella Drive and is open to all SDSU students. The Women's Resource Center hosts all type of events and mixers to raise awareness on social issues and bring people with similar interests together. When Aztec News returns, how SDSU and UC San Diego students are working together to create a year-long clothing swap. Plus, the nursing program's use of virtual reality in the classroom. Michael and Mackenzie are at the anchor desk when we come back. Welcome back to Aztec News. I'm Michael Quinn. And I'm Mackenzie Boss. SDSU hosted a week-long series of events focused on spreading awareness about issues surrounding sexual violence. One of these events was a trauma-informed yoga class. Students were empowered in a non-touch environment and could opt out of poses they didn't feel comfortable doing. Compared to a typical class, trauma-informed yoga is non-competitive and promotes healing. If you find yourself wondering what to do with the clothes you don't wear anymore, how about donating them? Aztec News' Isabella Garcia shows us a clothing swap in need of donations. The UC San Diego Women's Center is taking the first step in creating a clothing swap for transgender and non-gender conforming people. With the help of the Pride Center at SCSU, they want to provide a resource for people who can't easily get or afford the clothes they want to wear. Sam Lyons, the creator of the clothing swap, says people who don't fit into the gender binary tend to be low income because of job discrimination. And the same goes for like especially like trans youth. Like if they're still living in their parents' homes, it might be dangerous for them to go and like buy clothes, but if they're able to just come and have them accessible to them, uh, that's kind of the point. This clothing swap will turn into a quarterly event at UC San Diego. Whatever clothes they don't give away will be kept until next time and will be switched off with SDSU's Pride Center. The Pride Center is planning on creating their own year-round closet for non-binary students. It's set to open on the Trans Week of Empowerment, which is April 13th through the 19th. Emmanuel Listowman, coordinator of the SDSU clothing swap, says all donations are welcome. Whether it's more masculine clothes or more feminine clothes or just uh, the androgynous type clothing, you can bring any of that in because we have all kinds of people that are coming for these. The clothing swap is geared toward youth, particularly low-income students, because it can be especially hard for them to go out and buy those items. Students might feel pressure when shopping with their families who may not be accepting of who they are. So the creators of the clothing swap hope that this will be a good resource for transgender youth so that they can actually wear the clothing that represents their gender. And it goes to, you know, youth, so those are the ones that really need our help right now. Make sure to go out and donate. For Aztec News, I'm Isabella Garcia. The UC San Diego Women's Center also wants to make it known that you do not have to donate clothes in order to take clothes. Even with multiple structures on campus, students are still having a hard time finding a place to park, and it only gets worse when there's an event at Bia House Arenas. When students, uh, when SDSU hosts basketball games, comedy shows, and concert, Several parking structures are closed by noon and are not open to students, even those that have paid for semester parking, making parking a nightmare. Uh, I was late to class trying to park over here, and of course they just tell you to turn right around, so then you end up parking over at Queek, 
it takes like 15 minutes to walk over to this side of campus. And uh, when I'm trying to go to the gym during the med days, I have to try and either park over at Chappie, try and find parking over there, end up walking, you know, a mile just to get to the gym and back. Until changes are made, students will have to park before noon on event days to avoid parking issues. The band El Gringos performed their music as part of the Nooners on April 19th in the Conrad Prebis Aztec Student Union Courtyard. They played original tunes and psychedelic rock to expose students to an original generation of music. Campus bands play at noon every Wednesday in the Student Union Courtyard. The SDSU nursing department is going holographic. Chloe Salsameda has the story about SDSU's newest innovation. The San Diego State Nursing Department is taking big steps in modern technology. The school has become the first in the nation to use hologram technology to teach students. At the beginning of 2016, Pearson Education reached out to nursing director Philip Greiner to develop augmented reality devices to simulate real-world diseases for students. Since the collaboration began, Greiner, Pearson, and Microsoft have developed the Microsoft HoloLens and have received positive feedback from focus groups. Instructional developer Sean Hayes was a part of the development of the HoloLens. Projects a holographic image on these lenses here. So when the user wears this, they can actually see the hologram in 3D overlaid onto the actual environment. Once the user is immersed in the holographic environment, right. they can interact with virtual patients that have varying diseases and see how the illness progresses through various stages. Though the HoloLens has not yet been implemented into classes, nursing students are eager to begin using the technology. I didn't really know that we had such innovative research even happening here, so to find out that we're the first campus to get to use this technology is really awesome. By spearheading this new technology, SGSU is setting themselves up to be more competitive than ever. According to U.S. News, SGSU is ranked 28th in the nation for nursing school. With this new technology, Hayes says SDSU can make serious advancements for nursing. So this technology is brand new, nobody's doing any work with it yet, and uh, I think SDSU is positioned well to actually share what we're doing and, and hopefully uh, create some content that can be used um, nationally and globally in nursing education. SDSU hopes to begin implementing the HoloLens into classrooms this fall to see if student learning improves significantly. For Aztec News, I'm Chloe Salsameda. Stay with us. There's much more to come on Aztec News. Following the break, international students are sharing their culture through food. The Don Powell Theater is opening its curtains for a new play this spring. The musical comedy, The Full Monty, will run from April 21st to the 30th. The play is based on a film of the same name about six unemployed steel workers who come up with the plan to get money through a striptease act. Students can purchase the tickets at the Don Powell Theater box office for $15. More than 300 students attended TEDx SDSU at Montezuma Hall on April 9th in anticipation for the annual event. The five featured speakers talked about fear, creativity, humor, saying yes, and the effects of institutionalization. Aztec News reporter Kayla Jimenez has more. I'm here at Montezuma Hall at San Diego State for TEDx SDSU, where over 300 students listen to five keynote speakers, including a neuro humorist, San Diego State communication professor, and CEO of Place Organizers of the annual TEDx event at San Diego State University presented this year's TED speakers and performers to the campus community on April 9th. Lauren Gardner, president and organizer of the TEDx SDSU Club, says she is proud of the work her team has done and about the outcome of this year's event. The most important thing is that people feel like they're having the TED experience because that's irreplaceable and you only get that at one conference and it's TED. So you see, one little sketch can change the world. Now, for our next exercise, I want you to put on your thinking cap, and I want you to think about one thing that could change your world. Have you ever had to overcome the overwhelming desire to choke the living daylights out of some idiot who desperately deserves it? <laughs> this walk with Joaquin causes me to reflect a lot about whether or not I'm bringing a stake into the world or not. 
See, the walk that we live, it can either bring about state or it can bring about institutionalization for the Joaquins that we know. Students were engaged throughout the TED Talks and said they enjoyed the lessons they learned from the presenters. TEDx SDSU organizers said they are already preparing to plan for next year's event in 2018. For Aztec News, I'm Kayla Jimenez. TEDx, TEDx SDSU organizers were pleased with the outcome of the event and are now looking for students to help plan next year's event. International and domestic students are getting together every Friday to celebrate their culture through coffee hour. The International Student Center encourages international students to show what makes their country special by sharing their traditional meals. One group of hosts were from South Korea and prepared their meal hours in advance. We want to introduce Korean culture as well as Korean food, especially, because people usually think Korea is a part of China or very affected by Japan or both China, but you're not. They're very different from both countries. The coffee hour is every Friday from 12 to 1 p.m. at the International Student Center. Everybody is welcome to join. The SDSU Downtown Gallery has been busy this month with their exhibit featuring SDSU students and faculty. Aztec News reporter Jessica McFadgen is here with more. Thank you, Mackenzie. The students who participated in the gallery last week have really enjoyed the experience and value visitors' opinions. I took a look inside SDSU's Downtown Gallery where students and faculty join together in the third of a campus-wide art initiative. The Downtown Gallery is deinstalling a show that's been supported by artwork from the School of Art and Design and the School of Professional Studies in Fine Arts. Although it's coming to an end, the success of the show is apparent in its 2,000 visitors over eight weeks. So the exhibition that's coming down right now is called Every Which Way, and it was connected directly to the common experience for SDSU, which is a campus-wide theme that all different departments and schools throughout the university have the opportunity to participate in. The show has allowed artists to explore the experience of movement. Some have adopted a literal interpretation, while others approach the idea of illusions. The most praised pieces were those applying the theme to the historical and contemporary context of political movements. It kind of dealt with more of the uh, physicality of movement as well, um, how like quickly we move through materials. Um, there was a strong focus for me on making a synesthetic piece, so something that kind of like pulled at all of your senses at once. Alongside the paintings, demonstrations like Professor Kerry-Ann Quick's hand spinning and graphic installations from Arzul Oskal were also featured. All of these artists are challenged to create provocative and experimental pieces of creative art that push the boundaries of social commentary, allowing SDSU's School of Art and Design to continue as one of the top fine arts programs in the nation. For anyone who would like to see the next show, it opens a week tomorrow in downtown. Chantelle will be there and it's worth keeping an eye out for some surprise interactive installments. So what piece of art did you like the most? I would have to say the jewellery. The creators really took on a challenge connecting politics and necklaces. I definitely wear some of them. I'm going to have to check them out. Thank you, Jess. From all of us here at Aztec News, we thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Mackenzie Boss. And I'm Michael Quinn. Good night.